Where do you see agreement between uh, what you think needs to happen with tax reform and what Republicans are saying they need to see happen with tax reform? Yeah, I, I, my hope, some of the Republicans, not all, but some people say we can just cut taxes and even though CBO tells us it's going to increase the deficit by a trillion or two or three trillion dollars, that's okay because uh, because of dynamic scoring, they, somehow the, uh, the deficit will take care of itself. I think, I think more uh, reasonable uh, Republicans say no, no, this, if, if we're going to reduce rates and some, somehow, corporate rates or whatever, uh, at the end of the day this has to be deficit neutral. You have a few and more I, I, think that that's something, I think that's something Democrats would agree on. Yeah. The other thing that we're not interested in seeing is is the tax cuts for the for the very very wealthy, and to the extent that we can provide uh, lower corporate tax rates, the uh, to help make us make America continue to be an attractive place to which to s locate and grow businesses, I think there'll be uh, common common ground there. What's your, your message going to be to your constituents when you head back to Delaware? You got a few more hours in Washington D.C. before this uh, this summer recess kicks in. Uh, no doubt there are going to be some questions about lack of progress or what happened with the health care debate or the degree to which Democrats engage with Republicans and, and vice versa. What's your message going to be about whether or not the U.S. Senate is working at this point in history? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually encouraged that, uh, that we sort of hit the pause button on health care reform and under the leadership of uh, Lamar Alexander, Republican from Tennessee, Patty Murray, Democrat from Washington State, we're going to hit the pause button. We're going to focus on stabilizing the, uh, the exchanges, which we need to, uh, to, to do. And the third thing is to go regular order bipartisan hearings, bipartisan roundtables, inviting governors, insurance commissioners, health insurance, health economists, you name it, uh, doctors, nurses, to say these are the things that we need to do to fix in the, uh, the Affordable Care Act. These are the things we need to do to preserve in the Affordable Care Act. And I think people are encouraged, I am, that we can actually use this as a confidence, confidence building process and maybe do and pivot and, and start to do other things, including transportation infrastructure and including tax reform. What's your message to investors who may be watching or listening to you now who are worried about or wondering about what's going to happen uh, with regard to the budget, funding of the government, and the debt limit. Do you see a path forward here? Do you, do you see Democrats and Republicans working together to avert some sort of showdown here at the end of September? I think neither, neither side wants to be uh, blamed for a shutdown of our government. That's a... Uh... I sort of hate to claim that as a, a victory. That's, we should be aiming a, a lot higher than a lot higher than that. The um, one of the one of the things I keep going back to is Bowles Simpson. Uh, six seven years ago, they had a combination of revenue increases and and, uh, and uh, deficit uh, reduction uh, uh, methods to be able to provide long-term economic growth, but also uh, uh, something or uh, sound fiscal pro pro uh, policy as well. I don't know if we could ever go back to that. That was a great blueprint. And uh, one of my great disappointments was we were never able to to fully embrace that. John, the president embraced it late in the game. John Boehner embraced it late in the game. Unfortunately, Speaker Boehner was told by his, his folks in his caucus, you want to embrace that, count us out. And uh, so unfortunately, that never really happened. Something like that is what we actually do need. It may be uh, the triumph of man's hope over experience this thing that we're going to do that.